as you just mentioned, there's a, a significant rise in kind of trade tensions, military tensions, and this latest uh, news reflects that uh, kind of more military and defense uh, element of that. We saw that with U.S. and Iran, and more recently, as you said, over the, over the, the past few days with uh, Russia and China. This whole question around Taiwan could be potentially in response to what we're seeing is greater influence of the Chinese in Hong Kong. And with the Chinese, uh, with the Taiwanese, sorry, being a little bit more forceful in terms of their own defense capability, just signaling, you know, we have to some degree our sovereignty, uh, and we're not going to give it up. And if you see uh, Tsai Ing-wen's popularity has risen over the past few months on the back of the backlash in Hong Kong because Tsai Ing-wen is a little bit, you know, more anti-China or doesn't want to be as close to China in that regard. So her popularity has, has been rising. But there are concerns over the, over the next few years that you start seeing more military engagement and presence within the Asia region as China becomes a little bit more dominant in the South China Sea, for example, as they create a stronger partnership with uh, Russia, for example. And for this reason, you're going to see the U.S. Uh, try and pivot a little bit more and uh, put a little bit more pressure in terms of defense and military and technology in Asia. How much of uh, these comments uh, or these statements coming in from the Chinese Defense Ministry do you think is a timing issue? Because we just heard overnight uh, from Larry Kudlow, uh, the chief economic advisor in the U.S., uh, talking about how there will be face-to-face -face meetings uh, between trade representatives uh, uh, in the U.S. and China, a meeting next week uh, after phone conversations. How much is it really about sending out a signal from a military perspective? I think China likes to separate the two issues. They don't want to conflate the two issues. One is economic, the other one is their sovereignty in terms of military and political sovereignty. So they typically don't like to mix the two. And they, they have said in the past, uh, Taiwan is not a negotiator, uh, it's non-negotiable, for example. Mm -hmm. So that typically won't uh, be part of the discussions and they'll try and focus. However, there is, as you say, always an element of preempting any negotiating tax, uh, tactics. The U.S. Is, is, is typically very good, and Trump in particular, just before a deal, he'll drop a bombshell. Mm -hmm. Or just before a decision or a meeting, he'll drop a, bom a bombshell to kind of move the goal a little bit. And maybe China's starting to employ that tactic a little bit. But they were talking about uh, imposing uh, sanctions on U.S. firms. China was vowing to impose sanctions on U.S. firms for supplying Taiwan military. And they, so they don't want, uh, uh, you know, the U.S. to approve sale of tanks and missiles to Taiwan. And, you know, they don't want Taiwan and the U.S. to get closer when it comes to uh, their military ties. Absolutely. And so one way of, of uh, punishing the U.S. for that military encroachment is through the use of tariffs. But a trade deal... Uh, so to speak, a comprehensive trade deal uh, will have to kind of exclude Taiwan to a degree in terms of the, from a military and defense perspective, from China's perspective. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.